Is it time? Did we go live? We are live. Uh, welcome Facebook land. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. All right. We're going to do some, uh, some sharing real quick and get Shh. this all shared up. Yeah, sharing is caring. Oh, geez. Uh, I th- see if I can remember this. Was it in- Here, do the thing. Oh. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Boop. Oh, yeah. Done. Thumbprint. Nice. Thumbprint. Ah, uh, the old thumbprint on the iPhone. Ah. <sighs> Okay, I have to use Glenn's iPhone, so we're using my phone today to do the uh, to do the show. Yeah. Let us know if you can hear us. Are you watching the show? I'm, dude. I'm trying. Hold on. Oh, there she is. There she is. There she is. She. Why do they always say that? There she is. I don't know. It's not a she. Maybe. Maybe it's a she. Maybe it is a she. It's a she he. A she yeah. he. A she he. Um. Yeah. Oh, live now. Here we go. So uh, let's let's share this stuff. Why is she, she's frozen? She's frozen. Yeah. Why are you calling her a she still? I don't know, man. There we go. Oh, oh you, your volume's up. Ah, oh, turn off. So it sounds like we, it's, we can hear ourselves. That means the sound's on. Yeah. Anybody out there? I know we got a couple guys who are always in on this. Yep. Where are you guys? Yeah. John, Angel. Where are you guys at? Angel, the rest of the crew, Crew Nation. Miller, where are you guys? Uh, okay, so we got a big surprise for everybody today. It's not really a surprise. It's not really a surprise. It's not a surprise anymore. But uh, who's joining us? Who's, who's joining us? Who's joining us? Do we want to announce it right now? Or we want to yeah. wait till it comes on. Maybe it's a, well. It says if anybody's watching, it says already. Oh, so you can just say it. Yeah, we got a NFL free agent quarterback, Tyler Thigpen. Tyler Thigpen uh, joins Crude th- Sports Talk today. The pride of Coastal Carolina. Oh my God! Yes, we, he has had a he had a great career at Coastal Carolina. We got to yep. talk about that with him. Um, hold on, let me just let me just type something here. He's typing. Um, yes, typing, typing. Uh, share this with your friends, everybody. Um, join the conversation. Join the convo. Yeah. Is that a, is that a saying? The join convo? the convo? Yeah. Yeah, it's short for conversation. Hey, there's like two people watching. I think one is me and one is you. So, I'm not watching. Oh. So it's... <laughs> I'm not even watching our own show. It's just me. It's just you. It's just me. Okay, but here we go. We'll share this. We'll get it going with all of our social media and groups and everything, right? Yep. Get it going. Yep. Getting it going now. So, uh... So I'm not doing an outbox letter this week because I was so excited to have Tyler on. Right. Uh, I decided not to be angry at the beginning of the episode. No. I know. You don't want to be angry today. Yeah, I'm trying not to be angry. Like, I usually am anyways, but I'm trying not. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. That's the plan. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work out so well because I am still me. Yeah, you're kind of an asshole sometimes still, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm excited. How was your week? Mm, fine. Yeah? Uh, I see you, you... Look at what you did to the bar. Uh, people can't really see the no. whole thing at home, but you created a... What do you call it? Like, a, like the, the cover like for the cover. opening. Yeah. But it lifts up. It's pretty yeah, freaking yeah, I, badass. I hinged it. It's pretty cool. I hinged it. And I, I finished a new painting, so we have a little color up in the garage. Oh, uh, it's looking good. Or in the bar. Yeah. And Oh, it's hard to see, though. It is. It's so dark. It's like right and behind my your big head. Fat head is in the way. It's right behind your head. Yeah. Um, I'm almost done sharing, and we can start the episode. He's almost done sharing. I'm almost done sharing. Oh my god, sharing is caring, dude. Say, it right? started raining in here, so like when we had uh, the special guest co-host Alex Middleton on. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I ran into issues because it started pouring. Yeah, which is why uh, I figured out this whole lifting of the closure. That way we can keep it up. So it started raining a little bit earlier while we were setting up. It was raining bad today. And it kept it, like, we kept it open, and the rain just fell off the front. It was awesome. <laughs> so we can podcast with this thing open. We can do open podcasts. Yeah. Except for the cable running out to the phone, though. Yeah, whatever. To the video. Uh, electricity is electricity. It's yeah. Fine. Whatever. Whatever. We'll all get fried. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. Okay, for those of you just joining us, uh, sign up uh, or sign in and and roll call. Let us know where you're listening from. Uh, Let us know if you have any questions for Tyler Thigpen. Um, He's going to join our show here in just a few minutes. We're going to get him on. We are so excited to have him join the show. We're going to be giving him a call uh, at his home in South Carolina. South Kakalaki. South Kakalaki. Is that a place? Uh, That's what I say. I like it. Yeah. South Kakalaki. Okay, uh, just about Are you good? No, I got like a couple more and then we can start the show. Because what we do is we do Facebook Live every week for those of you just joining us for the very first time. Very first time. And then what do we do? We go uh, audio version. Yeah, we have an audio podcast that can be found uh, Tuesdays. It releases on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. Yep. Uh, anywhere where you can find your podcasts. Yep. 
I think I covered all of them, though, right? Yeah, Stitcher, Google Play, you said it all. Yeah. Yeah, you did good. Stitcher's kind of an awesome name. Like, it sounds like a little alien creature. Right. Like, I wouldn't mind having a Stitcher think, as a pet. Did I read, right? I think someone bought Stitcher. I think it was Google Play or something. Mm. Somebody bought Stitcher, and Stitcher is now owned by something, or rather. It says three comments, so who's saying shit? I can't see anything. What is what is wrong with How come my you can thing? never see the comments? I don't know. There, oh, there we go. Yeah, just leave it in that spot right there. Oh, there's Angel. I Angel's Angel in. Beyond. What's up, Angel? Uh, yeah, hey, Angel, we are going to talk a little UFC, and really not a lot, but I do want to talk a little CM Punk. I'm yeah. kind of curious about that. Yeah. Uh, we got another listener from North Kakalaki. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, one more. All right, are we sure? fucking ready yet? Dude, you're so impatient. I'm so anxious. Close that door. I'm you? anxious too. Yeah, the door will close. Don't worry. Don't worry. Mm. I'm, now I'm at the point where I can't remember who I've all shared it with. So Okay, so uh, oh, anybody, I share it on my own timeline. That's important. Anybody out there right now, like into college football, watching games, turn on uh, the Clemson Troy game. Yeah. This is a great game right now. Like, this is a possible number two upset. Big upset this week, possibly. Possibly. What's the score right now? Uh, I think it's 13 10. Clemson's up. Okay. Cool. So. All right. That's exciting. That is exciting. Uh, It's a good game. Okay. And I think Georgia was another one. I think. I can't even remember. I think they're ranked fucking 18 or 15 or something. Right. But they're up by like one or three or something like that. So that's another possible upset. I love it. I love it too. I love it. We ready to get this shit started? Yeah, we are ready. Okay. Okay. um... Oh, I got to share mine too. Yeah, you got to share ah, yours too. Stupid Glenn. What? What'd you do? Nothing. Didn't share it. Oh, Glenn. Uh, what is wrong with that guy? All right. So, uh, welcome everybody. Oh, welcome, Crude Nation, to another episode of Crude Sports Talk. This is episode twenty-nine. The uncensored sports podcast for the oil industry and whatever other industry you happen to be in. That's exactly right. We have a special treat for everybody. We don't want to gild the lily or, uh, you know, do anything else. Gild the lily. That sounds like a sexual position. No more gilding the lily. I think they used to say that in the Knights Roundtable days. Ah, uh, yes. That's yes. my favorite days. My favorite, too, actually. Yes. Yes. Um, welcome. Uh, we have a uh, guest who's going to be joining us today, Tyler Thigpen. Shortly. Shortly. Yeah. We're going to be giving him a call in, like, five minutes. Yeah. So let's get through the rest of this. So... Let me, uh, let me go ahead and start in this yeah. episode. What's happening in this episode? In this episode, we kept it short. Uh, we talk sports like usual, but this time it is with our special guest, Tyler Thigpen. Man, I'm so excited. Uh, t- check us out on Twitter. Yep. Oh, speaking of, I didn't tweet this out yet. Like, I can't do that from my phone. Or you have my phone. I have your phone? Yeah. So what do I do? I don't tweet know. It. Alex tweet Middleton it. was like, like, click that share thing and then take it over to, like, copy the link. Oh, copy the link, take it to Twitter. Take it to Twitter and post it. We sound so dense. I am I so yeah, but you're talking to the guy who hates like you're the, the social Twitter. media. You're the Twitterer. God, don't you dare call me a Twitterer. You're a Twitterer. Uh, but yeah, check us out Twitter at Crude Sports Talk. Um, like us on Facebook. Yeah, share these episodes with your friends. Yeah, uh, we like that. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, let's go through a little bit of shout outs. Uh, yeah. All our music brought Crown- to you by Crown City Crooks. Crown City Crooks. That's Crooks with a K. Uh, www.crowncitycrooks.com Right uh, Speaking of websites We have our website designer And social media platform designers At Original Creative Check them out That's Creative with a K as well Right uh, And then our bitchin' watches Our bitchin' watches are yeah. bitchin' They really are bitchin' The wood watches that will get you laid <laughs> That's the tagline from now on The wood watch that'll get you laid That's right So yeah. check out the Garwood Uh Go to thegarwood.com. Yep. Uh, promo code CRUDE. Get yourself 15% off these awesome wooden watches. It's beauty. Beauties. Nice work on the, on the promos there. Thanks. That's the first time, I think, since you've been here that I've done... The whole thing? Most of them, yeah. Well, because you made me go Twittering. I know. You, yeah, I was making you social media. Right. right. Did right. you tell people to sign up for Crude, Crude uh, Nation? No, I didn't. On our website? I didn't do that. Why don't you do that? Uh, head to our website. Uh, find links for all of our great sponsors while you're there. As well, you can sign up for Crude Nation. Yep. Um, we don't give out any of your information. No. You could be just part of the nation. The nation without giving away your information. Crude nations on your side. <laughs> you just stole the nationwide commercial, dude. 
Can't do that shit. Fuck them. They don't listen to us. All right. You ready to get our boy on? I'm ready. Let's head over to the phone lines and uh, bring in Tyler Thickpan. Here we go. Look, Angel was just talking shit, but he was talking shit about uh, slacking on tweeting. What? Yeah. Oh, really? He's so right, though. He is right. I haven't been on it. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. All right. We're ringing them in. Glasses are coming off right now. Oh, the same. Hello? Hey, is this Tyler? Yeah, this is Tyler. Tyler Thickpan, welcome to Crude Sports Talk. This is Jeremy and Glenn here. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. We've been, uh, you know, just enjoying this rainy day down here while we were uh, waiting to get you on. So, uh, appreciate you joining hey, us. Sunshine in here. Oh. Hopefully we can get some sunshine your way. Nobody likes a bragger, Tyler. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so appreciate you joining us. We have a mutual friend. That's kind of how we came to uh, meet each other. Josh um, kind of put us in touch. And he actually, he was right, Tyler. What's that? <laughs> he said you'd be a few hours late because you'd be primping your hair, trying to look, make it look oh, pretty. Oh, man. <laughs> I hear do whatever a phone interview. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, hey, uh, uh, we're going to get into it and talk a little bit. Tyler, um, you were the first QB to ever play uh, at Coastal Carolina for the Chanticleers. Um, you had led CCU to a 30-8 and record as a starting quarterback there. You hold passing records in every major category at CCU. Uh, you led the Chanticleers to an NCAA Division I uh, playoffs at, uh, and the Big South Championship. And uh, you played alongside um, other NFL players such as Jerome Simpson and Mike Tolbert back at CCU. Tell us about your time uh, playing there at CCU. Uh, what a great experience it was. I mean, the first year we, we got there um, when, we, uh, when I signed was in 2002. And all we did was practice for an entire year. Right. Um, and I tell you what, every single day that we went to practice, I mean, we practiced six days a week, and uh, it was a you know a full football season. But we never scrimmaged anybody; we only scrimmaged ourselves. So a lot of times throughout that year, I mean, I used to question like, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, the one thing that kept me going was knowing that I had a free education. But uh, you know, right. after after that first year, uh, you know, the first game we had September six, two thousand three, against Newberry. Yeah, uh, we we had we put together a 97 yard game winning TD drive, and you know that right there kind of defined. I wouldn't say you know the, the, my time at CCU, but that made that first year all worth it just for that moment right there. Really, um, to put together that long TD drive. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even throw the ball one time on that TD drive the entire time, and um, <laughs> you know, but after that, it just kind of. Our offense, we, we really, as, as an offense, we, we were mainly a run the ball um, on first and second, maybe throw it on third down right. until our senior years when we finally opened up the passing playbook and uh, started uh, throwing the ball. We spread the ball out. We ran the spread our senior year. But before that, we ran more of a pro-style offense where we were run, run, pass. And, right. um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, a great experience. Met a lot of great guys that I'm still friends with to the day. I'm um, actually planning a trip to go back down there in October to see the guys for the alumni uh, weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah. So that's in October, you said? Yeah, that's in October. That's correct. Dang. That sounds like a fun time. So, um, yeah, overall, like I said, I mean, going to school in Myrtle Beach, uh, their coastal, I mean, that was a great experience. Um, Their program has definitely taken off. I know they just took a bigger step uh, to go into the Sunbelt Conference. So I'm wishing them nothing but the best. No doubt. For that. But uh, overall, my experience there, I I wouldn't have traded it for anything. No doubt. And they just won the baseball championship. Yeah, they did, man. I tell you what, I was very excited watching that. I was nervous for them. I didn't even think I'd be nervous. I usually don't get nervous when I'm watching a game, but, <laughs> man, I, it's just crazy to get that far. And, um, you know, they lost the first game in the championship. Right. And I was like, man, you know, the, the stats prove that, you know, if you lose the first game, you never you never really win another. Wow. And for them to come back and win the last two games, it was just unbelievable. And I was very ecstatic for, you know, not only the players, but for Coach Gary Gilmore. He is a first-class act, and he deserves everything he got that, uh, last year. No doubt. No doubt. Good for them. So congrats to them. Um, so yes, now, bef- before you went to college, um, obviously in high school, uh, I think Glenn had a question for you. What uh, Did you always play quarterback? I uh, did not. Uh play quarterback. Um, it, you know, Little League, I played – quarterback and then one year i think that we had another kid that was better than me so i ended up playing running back and receiver and then once i got to uh high school i started back playing uh in middle school i think i, I played receiver and running back as well 
But then I got to high school or high school on JV. I started playing quarterback. My ninth, tenth, eleventh grade year, played quarterback. Won the starting job my tenth grade year. Yeah. So I started my tenth, eleventh grade year. Going into my senior year, um, we we ran a wing T style uh, style offense. So we didn't really throw the ball much. Um, so as a quarterback, you kind of you know just pretty much handed the ball off because we had a you know a lot of athletes right. around us. Well, my senior year going into that, we were playing a jamboree game. Well, I get hit in the back of the um, hit in the back, or whatever, and it kind of bruised some ribs. So I was out the next second January game, and I missed the first game. Well, I came back the second game and didn't really have a great game, um, just trying to fight through the injury. But I wanted to play for my team, and then um, so the starter had, had actually um, the other guy, the backup, had a good game the uh, first game. Right. So the third game come around, the coach is like, "We're going to make a change. You're a good enough athlete that we're going to put you." And play you at wing back and receiver, and um, so I ended up playing wing back and receiver for the re- remainder of the year. Um, and I'm and I tell a lot of people this all the time. That was probably the most fun I've ever had playing football, playing a different position because you just you got to see the field from a different perspective. Because I played quarterback my whole entire life, right? You know, now that I look back at it, and I'm you know you played. I, I was very fortunate to play in the NFL for seven years, but that year was just so much different because you just saw it. You actually understood the quarterback position, but you were playing a different position that you were able to understand where the quarterback was thinking and where he wanted to go with the ball. So that was pretty, that was a lot of fun for me that year. No doubt. So then, okay, so then you go on, play some college. um, And then in the the 2007 draft, you come out uh, selecting the seventh round, 217, overall by the Minnesota Vikings. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, that was a whirlwind. Uh, when we were going through the whole draft process, um, Oh, did we lose you? Oh, Oh, I think we lost him. Okay. So uh... for everybody out there in, uh, in Facebook live, we are, we were, and we'll get him back shortly. (laughs) Technical difficulty, uh, speaking with NFL free agent quarterback, Tyler Thigpen. We'll get him back on the line. So we're going to get him back right now. Right now. <laughs> so just everybody hold on. <clears throat> hey there. Hey, yeah, sorry, we lost you there. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Sorry. Uh, um, could've, could've well, um, what were we saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. The 2007 draft process, um, what an experience that was because throughout the whole time training for that, um, you know, multiple teams, I think we had six or seven teams came to our draft. It was our first, uh, not the draft, excuse me, our pro day, and that was the first pro day Coastal would ever held right. um, in the history of the program. And we had six or seven teams come. And throughout the whole time, after the pro day, we had a couple teams. The Eagles came back to visit. Uh, the Bengals came for a workout. Right. The Chiefs came for a workout. So they all worked me out individually. Wow. And any one of them said, uh, the Chiefs said, possibly from fourth round on. So I think back huh. when, back on that day, I think it was just a two-day draft, I think, back then. It was, I think, first to the third round and then the fourth to the seventh round on the second day. Right. Well, me and my brother, my brother came into town that weekend and we literally sat on the couch and watched the entire draft. And it was something that I had never imagined that I would do for two days watching or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I remember looking back and, you know, my phone, anytime I, I had, I had an apartment where I didn't have very good service. Right. And so I had to sit the phone over on the, the nightstand over by the TV or by the couch or whatever, just to get a good signal. And every time my phone would ring, whether it was a friend calling, I'd get excited or I, you know, I didn't know what it was. And then back then the phone, the phone would actually tell you where, um, the uh, area code was coming from. Right. So I had one call from Detroit, Detroit called in the fifth round. Well, they were calling because they had taken Drew Stan in the second round and said, Hey, we still interested in bringing you in for as a free agent. Right. And so I was like, well, I appreciate it. And, you know, if something doesn't happen, then, you know, we'll, we'll consider it. Sure. And the next thing you know, pick two, I think it was like two fifteen. the Minnesota Vikings call me and get on the phone. And I, I remember just talking. I don't remember. I know it was Brad Childress and Rick Spielman were the GM and the head coach. Right. And I just remember them talking and I don't think I ever heard anything. I just remember them <laughs> saying that we're excited. We're going to pick you at two seventeen. Yeah, you know you're going to be a Minnesota Viking, and I, I never. Only thing I heard was look for your name to go across the TV here in a minute. <laughs> and I got off the phone with them, and next thing you know, my name went across. And I think my family and friends that were there watching us that day, or you know, watching, 
I think they were more excited than I was at the time because I just didn't even know what had just happened. It was surreal, wasn't it? Because that, that was on a Saturday, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, and then the Friday I was shipped out to go to a, um, to mini camp, which I missed graduation. I didn't get to walk, which was wow. you know something I looked forward to, but I think it was worth it all in the end or whatever to be able to – to actually end up missing that oh, but yeah. uh so i came back home for you know i had a three-day mini camp then came back home and then i had a week off i guess and then they brought us back so i had really two weeks to pack up all my stuff um and get it ready just knowing that my lease was going to end that i was going to be going to minnesota to be there right so that was really a whirlwind for me because i was um you know being from south carolina i was from a small town went to coastal had a great time there knowing that um you know, how much fun that was. When you got to the NFL, I just kind of saw how much of a business wa- business it was. I right. didn't know it at the time until I got a little further along in my career. But at the time, I just was kind of shell-shocked because I really was just picked up and moved straight to Minnesota, and I knew I was going to be there. Wow. And, you know, just like that, um, I, was mo- I was moved to Minnesota, learning a new playbook. Um, it was frustrating because they threw, I want to say, probably – 80 plays at us in, you know, the first day that we had, to, you know, we had 20 plays the first day and then another 20 plays and then another 20 and 20 on the third day that they had. Right. And so it was like 80 plays that we had to learn. And I'm rooming with um, Brian Robeson. He was a DN that played at Texas. Okay. And he's over there looking at his playbook. He's like, oh, we had four plays to learn, you know, for the whole mini camp. <laughs> and I'm over there trying to, as a quarterback, trying to learn – every single thing possible about these offenses. And I, I didn't really understand it as well as I do now because I never, in college, I wasn't, our offense was, you say one word and you knew exactly what to do. Um, right. You know, the line was getting the protection call. It wasn't about reading the hots and, you know, throwing stuff like, you know, throwing hot routes and making adjustment calls at the line. We didn't have any of that in, high, in college. No doubt. In college, it was call a play. If a uh, offensive line make a, um, um misses a block you make him miss and try to make a play i mean or if a guy blitzes you just throw it to that guy whatever i mean it was never anything complicated to where you were adjusting you know your your protections or right just things like that so that was a big whirlwind that I, I think i really got overwhelmed in the first you know the mini camp and then when i got back for otas and stuff that was really very overwhelming for me Okay. But, uh, you know, I'm glad I stuck with it. And, you know, seven years later, I was able to retire. And um, now I'm about to become a dad. And there looking, you go. I think I'm looking forward to that more than I am the entire career that I played. Really? Well, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, you move on to the next step. And uh, it's kind of a chapter that you uh, that you had that you're proud of. And then you kind of put behind you and move on to the next one, right? Absolutely. You're exactly right. I mean, so many people ask me now, they're like, you still trying? You still trying? And, and I just, you know, I would love to um, continue to try because I enjoy training and right. training with different guys and doing stuff like that. I mean, because I, I still love working out until the day. But uh, right. to me, it was just there's a time and there's a time and a place where, you know, the one thing that got me in the NFL was that I was cheap to keep around, and you know, a veteran costs more. So that you sure. know, they they ended up releasing a veteran to keep me at the time in Minnesota. Right. And then as soon as I get to um, uh, as soon as I was done in Buffalo uh, in 2012, you know, it was for me to sign a contract in 13, but I was going to cost more than what it would cost for a rookie guy. And, I got you. You know, yeah. I wasn't considered, a, you know, a starter in the NFL, so I was going to be considered a backup. So right. Right. same thing that got me in is the same thing that put me out. So, but I mean, yeah. that was part of understanding the business. And I was okay with, you know, when I finished my career in, two, in 2012, did I want to continue to play? Yeah, I did. But I understood that life goes on after football and sure. that, you know, some of these guys don't know exactly what to do, but I was very fortunate to have family and friends around me. And I was, you know, I was raised, I felt like the right way to understand the concept of what to do with my money. I mean, I've had, I got, I had one car in one house. I, yeah. I saw so many people, maybe I guess saw, I saw them make mistakes along the way that they had four and five cars, right. a house in Miami, a house where they were playing, a house in LA. Yeah. I just didn't see any you know, use in that because you can only drive one car and you can only live under one roof. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. That was just kind of the, yeah. the concept that I kind of had in my head, whether it was my agent, Joel Turner, or just the way that I was raised. I mean, I was definitely had some great mentors in my life to kind of to bring me along the way. Exactly. Um, 
Okay, question for you. So now after Minnesota, you get to you get to Kansas City, and you had a year where you were pretty much the starter for the entire year. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the transition to Minnesota that was um, that's where the part where it was kind of I, I was still young, so I didn't really understand it because I get through preseason. I had a I had a pretty good first preseason game, and they kind of shut me down after that. They didn't really let me throw the ball anymore. We kind of just hand the ball off. I didn't play in the second and third preseason game. I played a little bit in the fourth one, um, but they kind of shut me down because they knew in their mind they were going to they were going to um, put, try to put me on the practice squad. So they didn't want any of the other teams to see me. Right. Well, they cut me on Saturday morning. I go in right after they cut me to sign the practice squad papers early because it wouldn't the paperwork wouldn't go in until Sunday. Right. Well, on Sunday, um, I figured at the time I, I was dating a girl. She was in town and. We were just walking around Best Buy, and the one thing I said I want to do myself, I want to buy myself a PlayStation. And I was walking around Best Buy. I had the PlayStation in the um, in the cart. Yeah. And next thing you know, I looked down, my phone's ringing, my agent's calling. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm in Best Buy. He goes, how far are you away from your apartment? I'm like, um, it's five minutes down the road. And he was like, well, head on back. Go pack your bag. Kansas City, they put in a um, waiver claim for you. So you're heading to Kansas City. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he goes, they're going to call you in the next 20 minutes. They got your flight information. So Dang. the next 20 minutes, I mean, so I, I leave the, I go put the PlayStation back, put the cart back. And I'm <laughs> in the car. And within, but by the time I was at getting to my hotel room uh, door, they had called me and they said, hey, you know, we got your flight. Here's your flight information. So they had me on the first flight out um, of wow. Minnesota heading to Kansas City. Wow. And, you know, thank goodness I had all my bags packed because they were just, I was in a hotel. I really was just living out of my bags anyway. Yeah. But uh, so I go straight to Kansas City. At, um, I land at 12 o'clock that night. They, um, one of the guys, one of the interns picks me up, gives me the uh, paperwork for, to fill out for medical stuff. Um, so I get that. And I think the next morning they pick me up at five o'clock the next morning. So I probably had about five hours sleep on the first day of work or whatever at Kansas City. Yeah. And I had to go in for my physical, pass the physical, and then I then I was thrown right into learning a completely new offense where I just felt like I was getting comfortable with the uh, one in Minnesota. And so now I gotta learn a completely different one. Sure. So that's another whirlwind in itself. Um <laughs> but it was a great experience. I mean that first year it was so awesome because I got to go against the first defense there in Kansas City uh for the entire year on um uh, for the scout team, you know, servicing the number one defense. Yeah. So that helped me understand the speed of the game. Um, you know, I, I tried to learn that offense the best I could, uh, but I had no, I had no reps in it because I was a third string quarterback. Right. And there's no room for the, the, the only thing a third string quarterback does, is he just reps the scout team. Right. So that's pretty much all I did for the entire year um, of that year. And then I got a little bit of playing time. I think it was week 15. Right. Um, against the San Diego Chargers. Uh, we drove all the way down the field and ended up throwing a, a pick to Antonio Camardi right in the end zone. But um, And then the next week they were actually going to put me in a little more against Denver. And I'm in practice, and I get rolled up on by D. Lyman. Oh. Um, and I end up spraining my MCL. Right. So I missed the last um, two games of the season uh, with a sprained MCL. And then I go into the offseason the next year. Uh, they bring in Chan Gailey, uh, who I you know still have a great relationship with and admire a lot of and think a lot of. Right. Um, he uh, comes in. I have a great off season. Still the number three quarterback behind Brody and uh, Brody Kroll and Damon Heward. Yeah. Um, the first game, uh, Brody Kroll gets rolled up or gets tackled. He sprains his AC joint. And Damon Heward comes in and he almost brings us back in to win. The next week, for some reason, they're like. We're going to split time with you and, and Damon. So huh. against Oakland, I ended up playing, I think, a little more than Damon did. Um, didn't have a great game, but, I mean, what, I mean, it was serviceable. But uh, the third game I started against Atlanta uh, in 2008, through three interceptions, uh, it was god-awful. I mean, it was <laughs> oh, about as bad of, a bad of a game I could have had in my career. Right. And the next game, so I, we lose it, lose it at Atlanta. The next game they start, uh, Damon Heward. Uh, against I think Cincinnati, we win that game, and then um, I think we had a bye week, and then we played Carolina, and then we played or no, excuse me, we had we played Cincinnati, then Carolina, then we had a bye, and then we were going to play Tennessee. So 
those three games uh, or two games that, that Carolina and Cincinnati Damon started, and then the bye week, they actually brought Brody back. Um, he got back healthy from his AC sprain. Right. He started against Tennessee that uh, following week. I think it was week six or seven, somewhere around there. Um, he comes in the second drive of the game. He gets high low and blows his ACL out. Ah. So Damon comes in right after that, I think, and it was right before the halftime. Damon throws and hits his thumb on a helmet. Well, he ends up breaking his thumb. They find out at halftime that he broke his thumb. Right. Well, I come in and play the second half of the Tennessee game. End up driving down the field. I think we scored a touchdown, kicked a field goal or something. We were we were pretty much out of the game at that point, but uh, drove down the field and moved the ball really well. And the next game, it was pretty much me because Damon had a broke thumb and um, and Brody had torn his ACL. And the next game was against the New York Jets. And guess who was quarterback in Red Favre? Uh-huh. So. <laughs> That was that was a great experience there because he was somebody that I watched growing up right. and that I just, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say idle, but he was kind of a role model for me. He was somebody that I always enjoyed watching play football because he just enjoyed the game so much. Um, so I remember talking to him. They brought in Ingle Martin, who was on the – with Green Bay that knew Brett Favre. So before the game, we actually went out and talked to Brett Favre before the game. So I was kind of almost starstruck in a sense. <laughs> of being on the field talking to him and go out and actually outplayed him. Uh, they ended up, I think, driving down at the end of the game and scoring a touchdown, and um, we weren't able to get the ball back, I think, till you know, with a little bit of time left. So we weren't, we didn't have enough time to get back down the field. Right. But uh, And then played for the rest of that year, and what a great experience that was. I mean, we went from scoring 14 points on the offense a game to scoring 24 or 25 points a game. Wow. Uh, I mean, we had – Seven fourth quarter leads that we gave up in the, in the late part of the game. We, our defense was ranked thirty first out of thirty two teams yeah, that the, year. And defense struggled the, that the year. The Detroit Lions were the thirty second uh, worst team, which they went zero and sixteen that year. So now, Tyler, so, with that that was a, th- that year when, that? They, when they switch when the Chiefs decided to switch to more of that spread offense. Is that kind of what yep. changed everything? That did. Uh, they knew that I had ran that kind of in college. Um, they knew that. And one of the things that you always talked about, the pistol offense um, mm-hmm. was one thing. And the reason we ran the pistol offense so much was because of L- uh, Larry Johnson, he wasn't a back that would, you know, like Jamal Charles was a rookie at the time. Jamal, was, it was okay being beside the quarterback in, in the shotgun because he could run sideways. Right. Larry Johnson was a guy that wanted to get straight downhill. He wasn't a guy that wanted to um, – he wasn't like kind of a scat running back. He was one that needed a fullback in front of him, and that's how he was going to run the football. So right. that's kind of why we put the pistol in to allow Larry, um, who they had just paid a lot of money to, uh, to allow him to be able to run the ball um, effectively. Right. But I mean that that was and it was so it was so I guess crazy because the so many um, reporters that year, they were like, you can't, you can't make it successful in the NFL running shotgun. You can't do it. You can't do it. That was every single interview that year. They were like, what are you going to do when you have to get under center? And my argument towards the end of the year was, I think it was right at the end, the last interview I had at the end of the um, year was you, there's no way you can keep running the shotgun in this, in the NFL. And I was like, well, my last three touchdown passes, I was under center. Um, but you look at it now, yeah. and every single team in the NFL is running shotgun oh, yeah. over 50% of the time. And it's, it, it was kind of like I was almost too early in the generation that kind of yeah. before everything um, was getting started. And I think the one team that ran the ball was in shotgun more than Kansas City that year was New England. Sure. And they had Matt Castle that year after Brady. Because right. we knocked Brady out that year in 07. Right. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, okay. So that was the year. Now we, we let's get to a specific time. So this is uh, you caught a touchdown pass in a game. So yep. the way I understand, it, you're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if I remember it right. Yeah, that's um, correct. Uh, I think you lined Jamal Charles was lined up as the back, or was it Larry John? It was Charles, right? Yeah, Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles, and then he flips the ball to Mike Bradley. You're lined up as a wide receiver, and you're. You're uncovered down the field, and uh, Bradley throws a like a 37 yard touchdown to you. Yeah, um, it's funny. I'll give you the story about that the entire week. Um, for some reason, Chan came in that week. He was like, "This because I always, as a quarterback, you always want that throwback pass to the quarterback. That's <laughs> any quarterback that I know that wants that. Um, 
and I used to do it in high school, or I used to do it in college all the time. That right. it never happens. And then Chan, you know, I used to say it all the time about doing it as well. And um, that week in practice, the first day of practice on Wednesday, we run the play, and they throw it perfect ball. I drop the ball. Oh no! So, <laughs> so I'm like, good gosh, you know, like the one chance that I've got to prove or whatever. Well, we ran it again on. We didn't run it on Thursday because we did um, third down and red zone, or third down a little bit of red zone, right? On Thursday, and then on Friday we repped it again. And we're just in jerseys at the time, and I kind of tweaked my ankle a little bit when I caught the ball. I actually caught it this time. <laughs> I tweaked my ankle a little bit, but I didn't let the coaches know that. Uh oh. So we did catch it, and the coach he was like, um, "Finally, the coach was like, all right, we're going to call it if we if we get it dialed in." Right. Well, my job was to kind of, uh, I guess you would say, act because we ran about two or three wildcat plays before that, uh-huh. and my job was, it, you know, to come back to the sideline and say to coach, "Hey, um, they're not paying attention to me." So okay. all I was doing was just coming off the ball, very lackadaisical. And, you know, not trying to block the corner or anything like that. Right. Well, finally I came back to the sideline and said, Coach, you're not paying attention. Well, he <laughs> calls it, I think, the next series. And lined up across from me for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is Rondé Barber. Oh, right. Probably a future <laughs> Hall of Famer. Right. <laughs> so he um, he's lined up across from me. Well, there was kind of a bad exchange from Jamal to uh, Mark Bradley. Yeah, it looked, it looked like Bradley was, was going to drop it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, apparently, because I, I talked to Rondé after the game, he goes, I was looking in the backfield, and I saw that exchange. And he goes, I went to go run after it. And then next thing you know, he regains control of the ball. And, you know, I think I was 10 yards past him at that point. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah. there was no turning back then. But it, it was a perfect ball. I couldn't ask for a better, better <laughs> placement from a receiver to throw the ball. So... That was definitely the one of the biggest highlights of my career and, and a lot of fun for sure. No doubt. So now, Tyler, I got a question for you. When it comes to that pass, when you see the ball leave Bradley's hand, how how much did you pucker for that thirty seven yards? <laughs> I didn't. You know, honestly, I, I I know I dropped it in practice that day. I think the sun was in my eyes. Is what I'm gonna tell everybody. <laughs> but um, you know, in practice, but I'm telling you, in the game, I I didn't even question one bit. I'm like, I'm gonna catch this. And this is going to be a touchdown because I mean, I, there was no safety anywhere around, so I knew I wasn't going to get hit as I caught caught the ball. Yeah, I mean, it was absolutely perfect. So I think so. I didn't. I really looking back at it, I really don't think I thought about dropping it because if I think if I thought about dropping, it, I probably would have dropped it. So right. So you just um, you just didn't think about it, and it, it, that's what made it less stressful on that play. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So now, were you the first, did you run a TD in that game as well? Did you rush for a TD? Yeah, I did. I, I think I uh, – no, I don't know if I ran a TD. I think I threw a you TD. You threw one. In that game. I so, think I threw a TD to uh, Dwayne Bell. I didn't run one. I thought okay. that was the first one, I think. I don't know who was – Um, I think Drew Brees had done it maybe in 06 or something. Right. Or maybe he did it in 09 or something. I don't know. It was something like that. Well, you were the it, first um, one in, in Kansas City to ever throw for a touchdown and yeah, catch a touchdown, right? Yeah, that was the first right? one in Kansas yeah. City. That's correct. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, uh, put to bed something for me because a couple years back, um, well, no, uh, not last season, season four, Geno Smith um, ends up yep. having some uh, some locker room issues and uh, he breaks his jaw, which we all know about. Then rumors came out that your name came up because Chan Gailey's now in the in the New York Jets, uh, you know, organization, and that they were going to call you in for a workout. Was that what's that all about? Like, is that was that false? Was it true? Can you kind of that was one that was one hundred percent true. It um, was okay. I was I actually we had um I had reached out to Chan uh, and told him once it had happened. I said, Chan, you know, like I'm still training. Yeah. Um, you know, if y'all, I, I'd love to be on the next flight up there. Well, Chan went into the GM and was um was obviously arguing to you know trying to persuade the GM to bring me in. Where it ended up being a financial situation because they knew Gino was going to only be out for like four to six weeks. Right. Um, and they knew that if they brought me in week one, that they would have to pay me for the entire year. Right. And that's why they ended up bringing in Matt Flint. Right. Matt who Flint. had already been, he, he had already used his entire year salary. Cause if, I don't know if you're, from, if you're familiar with the after four years in the NFL, if you get cut, um, and you know, in your fourth and fifth and sixth year, and so on, 
Uh-huh. You have one time to get a payout of they have to pay your entire salary for that year. Okay. And that's the only time you can do it. So Matt Flynn had already done his, right. I think, with the Seahawks at the time. Right. So they only had to pay him week to week. If they would have brought me in, they would have had to pay me um, a yearly salary gotcha. for the entire year if they'd have let me go once Gino came back. Gotcha. So, I mean, I, that was one thing I, I thought was a done deal. And you know, Chan texts me back. He goes, Tyler, he goes, I wanted you here, no questions asked. Because yeah. I knew how I knew how good of a locker room guy you are, and also what you know me and Fitz thought of you because Fitzpatrick was there at the time as well. Yeah, and me and Fitz had a great relationship. That you know, as a backup, not only you got to be ready to play, but you also your job as a backup is to help the starter any way you can. Sure, because if you see something you know and you're not telling him, then what what what, uh, what good are you doing your team? You're doing your team no injustice if you see something you're selfish to the point where you're like you know i don't want Pitts to do well because if he doesn't do well i'll get to play but i knew the type of person i was and the type of player i was i knew that it was my job as a backup to help our team and give our team the best possibility to win and no matter what whether it was someone helping me or me helping someone else I, mean, right. I knew that was my responsibility as a backup gotcha cool Hey, Tyler, we're going to get into a couple of questions, but I think Josh is going to uh, try and put you on the spot. Uh, so he Uh-oh. he asks us... We're doing, asked, just so you know, we're on Facebook Live, and uh, we have some people, you know, filling questions here and there and that, and some any of the good ones we'll ask you here. So we got one from Josh, actually. So Josh asks, uh, he, wants, he wants us to ask you about your best uh, Broadway at the beach story. <laughs> Oh man! What's I don't that? Know if I remember what? my best. One. Well, what is? What, what, yeah, Broadway. Yeah, what's at the that beach. all about? We don't know. He, he didn't tell us what's all about. Broadway at the beach is like uh, Celebrity Square. It's an area um, in Myrtle Beach where everybody goes. There's a bunch of bars uh-huh. um, where you'll go out uh, there. Like I said, at Broadway at the beach, and um, <laughs> you know, a perfect night for me there was always start out King Kong, um, and then venture over to um, Rodeo, possibly Crocodile Rocks, and then end up at Revolution. So that was, there was plenty of nights where I did that uh, Friday and Saturday night. And uh, it was pretty much, it became a routine there for a while. I was a single guy. I'm not going to lie. So, like I said, I probably don't remember some of, I probably don't remember some of the best nights. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. I can't recall those. <laughs> those are always the best ones. The those ones are the best ones. The ones your friends have to tell you about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, well, here, how about this? Uh, if you don't mind, how are we doing for time? You okay? I know I we promise we wouldn't keep you too long. Are you yeah, good for time? Yeah, we're fine. What's that? Sorry? Yeah, every, everything's fine. You're yeah, fine? You're okay, good. great. Um, how yeah, about, yeah. okay, so are you still watching the NFL then? I mean, NFL comes back for Sundays tomorrow. Yeah, we had a game um, on Thursday. You know, I, I always, um, I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of, I watched the first half of the game on, um, on Thursday, right. Um, I didn't get to watch the second half. Um, I feel like I'm just trying to get as much sleep as I can right now. Uh, yep. Before yeah. <laughs> uh, before the baby gets here. Yeah, so, um, that's exciting. I you know, kind of spent time. My wife, she's not a huge. She'll watch a little bit of Carolina football because she cheered at South Carolina. Uh huh. Yeah. But uh, other than that, she really doesn't want to watch much football. So we kind of after halftime, I turned it off and we watched one of her shows and uh, that was spent a little time with her and being a good husband that with her feet swelling and stuff. I, Kind of massage her feet and calves and stuff like that. Just there you go. Get a couple of brownie points. You, you, know? you got to get those brownie points, man, especially right now. Yeah, yes, exactly. now's the time. That's that <laughs> South Carolina charm right there. But I did. I did. Um, I, I I lost a little bit of interest. Um, you were asking if I watched the NFL. I lost a little bit of interest in watching the preseason just because it's not the starters. I mean, I will watch. Yeah. Like I knew, um, like Connor Shaw, I knew was playing with the Chicago Bears. So I watched a couple of his games right before he was injured. Um, but other than that, I mean, if I know somebody, and uh, I'll, I'll still watch a little bit of that. But the preseason for me, for the most part, so you don't know if it's the starters are playing, and yeah, half exactly. the time the starters they're not trying to. You know, if it's a big time, a big money guy, he's not going to be playing balls to the wall in a preseason game because you know if he gets injured in a preseason game, what good is he going to be to it? You know, in a regular season game. So I kind of lost a little bit of interest in preseason, right. but I am looking forward to. Uh, tomorrow to the games uh, starting back off. So I, I really am looking forward to that. Very cool. So we got we got a couple of those games that we want to kind of get your take on as as a quarterback. Uh, a lot of these young right. these young quarterbacks. So so you got Cleveland and Philly, and you'll see uh, RG three taking on Carson Wentz. What's what's your take yeah. on that game? Who who do you think's got that one? Oh man, you know I played this. I uh, had a little stint in Cleveland. Um, I but right. I, you know, I watched the kid Carson Wentz. 
um, there at North Dakota State. He beat up on Coastal a couple years. Right. Uh, the kid's a great player. Um, you know, the biggest thing I can say for him is to to lean on your teammates and manage the game well. Um, I think Cleveland, I think they got a lot of talent. They got a lot of weapons. Um, I don't know if, you know, with this new coach with um, Hugh Jackson in there, if they're going to be able to get out of their own way. Uh, for some reason, I feel like there's a curse in Cleveland. Yep. I don't know why it is. It just seems like that year in and year out. <laughs> But, uh, you know, if RG3 can take care of the ball and take care of himself and get down, I, I, I feel like they do have a chance with the weapons around them and the defense that they have um, that they would be able to beat Philly. Is it at Philly or at Cleveland? In Philly. In Philly, yeah. Okay, it's in Philly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, in, you know, like I said, in, in Philly, I don't know if they, you know, just would uh, – it's tough, too, I'm sure, for that new coach. I'm not sure. Who's the new coach in Philly? Uh, West uh, – shoot. You put me on the spot. I don't know. Maybe our, our uh, Facebook well, Live guys help us out. That, yeah. But the biggest thing for Philly right now is I don't know if they really have much identity in the sense that, you know, when Chip Kelly kind of was there for the two or three years he was there, he kind of got those guys ready for his offense. And he was trying to get the guys that were his style. He had a lot smaller offensive linemen, guys that were quicker that could get a little better leverage. So yeah. I don't know with the new coach if he got has his complete personnel yeah. um, ready for – an entire year of his offense because Chip Kelly just runs that style of offense where you don't need the 320 pound offensive line guys. Right. I mean, you can have a smaller guy. Yeah. Gotcha. So that I'm interested to see. if I had to pick a team is, do you know if Josh uh, Gordon's back yet? No, he's a uh, four game suspension this year. So he's not back he till week five. Suspension? Yeah. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. If I had to pick, a, um, if I had to pick, I would say um, that Cleveland would win that game. All right. We Just will, because we'll, of the experience we that will, RG3 uh, has. We'll mark you down for Cleveland. Uh, another one, New York Giants are facing Dallas and the uh, the Dak Prescott era, and the Ezekiel Elliott backfield is about to start. What are your thoughts on that? Is that at Dallas? It's in or Dallas. In Dallas, yep. yep. In Dallas? I'll yep. tell you what, I'm, I'm going with the New York Giants on that. Um, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, I was very impressed with Dak Prescott and the way that he moved the ball. Um, in those preseason games that he played in. He did very well, a, a great job of not turning the ball over. He looked poised. He looked like a 10-year starter at quarterback, and that's right. very seldom do you see that as a rookie um, that comes in and, and does that well in preseason because more times than not, it looked like a deer in the headlights. I know how it was for me as a rookie, right. but uh, for him coming in, he almost looked like a Peyton Manning in a sense. So you, but, could, um, so you could tell that he had this sense of awareness. Is that kind of what you see there? You could. I mean, and the guy, he's, he's not, he's a very mobile guy as well. I mean, he right. can get out of the pocket. He can, he's a big guy that, you know, even though if a guy gets his hands on him, he's not necessarily going to go to the ground. And, um, that's, that's, um, the, what, the thing that he always, um, that he has is just is something that looks like you, you can't coach is that it factor. And then, you know, you, you can't really coach that. Some guys have that and some guys don't. And definitely Dak does have that. But I yeah. still think that, uh, the New York Giants, I, I, I believe that they'll win that game. Got you. Okay. They, yeah, they just spent a bunch of money on their defense. On their defense I think yeah. that they shored some stuff up. Uh, next one, he's not a rookie, but you got uh, New England and uh, and Garoppolo taking on Arizona and Carson Palmer in Arizona. Um, whew. I tell you what, it's hard to go against Bill Belichick. <laughs> that, that dude, now, is, that now dude we'll is something you, special. Oh, yeah. Now, we'll let you know, there's no Gronkowski. Yeah, Gronkowski did not fly with the team, just so you know. I did, see, yeah, I saw, you saw that. that? Okay, you yeah. know, I, I wasn't very impressed with Arizona um, this year in the preseason in the, some of the games that I got to watch them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tell you what, it's it's hard to go against New England, even though Garoppolo he he come on there towards the end of the preseason. Um, they still, you know, I think that's one thing that that New England and uh, people always ask me, how are they so good every single year? Because you look at them, they don't really have the big name guys that they're paying, you know, ten fifteen million dollars a year. I think the one thing that separates them is the coaching. Um, right. They have such phenomenal coaching. Um, that That's why they're each and every week, they're in every single game. Yeah. And that's why they're in, go deep in the playoffs every single year. So I'm going to have to go with um, New England on that one. So okay. I, I'd love to see that uh, young kid do well because I know he's got some big shoes to fill after uh, when Tom Brady's gone. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, those are the only ones we're going to give you. Just, uh, you know, we're not going to go through all the games here, but uh, uh, how about we get into some speed around some questions so our listeners can get to know you a little bit better? All right, sounds good. Okay, you ready? Uh, game mm-hmm. number one Game of Thrones. Do you watch it or no? 
No, I do not watch it. No I've Game of Thrones? Of people watch it. Oh, I, dang. No Game of Thrones. Uh-oh, okay. Kinda, I hope I don't get addicted on it. I heard it's very addicting. It is very, very addicting. Very addicting, yeah, yeah. All right, so <laughs> w- Walking Dead. Do you watch Walking Dead? Uh, Walking Dead. I actually, my wife uh, is a huge, um, she watched that, and since we've been together, uh, we we started watching that. So uh, I definitely do watch that. Gotcha, okay. Uh, how about Hard Knocks? Hard Knocks. Uh, I don't have HBO. When I had HBO, I watched it, but okay. um, you know, I, I don't watch that. That's a fun show to watch because it's just. I got there at the tail end in Kansas City um, when they did it in 07. Right. So that was a pretty cool experience to kind of talk to the guys, and those guys were just so relieved. Is the last the first day I got there was the last day that Hard Knocks was there. Oh, okay. It was the first team meeting year. Yeah. And uh, my name actually went across the, um, I guess, when I was watching that show, whatever, my rookie year, uh-huh. uh, my name went across the, because um, they had it on a piece of paper, the guys that they were going to try to claim. Right. And, um, <clears throat> but for me, I mean, looking at that now, I mean, it's just, it's so much, it's so crazy how the the way that they can perceive everything with all that time of video and footage that they just take a, a 30 minute or an hour segment out of, you know, four days of filming is just unbelievable. So, Those production crews. Yeah. They must be doing, they do a great job there for sure. Yeah. They yeah. must be working overtime. Exactly. No doubt. <laughs> but if I, if I did have HBO, if you'd, I did have HBO, I would watch that. You'd watch Absolutely. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one, whiskey or beer? Both. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. What I, do you, I would say, uh, what beer. You, beer. Beer. Okay. All right. Beer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wranglers or Levi's? Don't judge me, guys. <laughs> no, 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 we no, don't no. judge. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wranglers or Levi's? Uh, Wranglers. Wranglers. Oh, boy. And last one. Uh, favorite type of music? Um, I would say country, uh, but I will listen to anything. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Yep. Uh, I mean, you know, knowing that it just depends. I guess more or less my envi- I can adapt to my environment. You know, do you ever I'm get hanging around my yeah? Do you ever get into I'm like around my brothers? I can listen to rip, rap music if I'm hanging yep. around my. So I mean, it's just. But I, I would probably, if I were to get in a car, I'd probably turn country on over hip hop or. If you're wearing Wranglers, you better be listening to country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I don't even think if I had to choose that. I mean, I would say Wranglers, but. Um, I really don't own a pair of Wranglers, so oh, okay. I really don't wear that many jeans. So uh, I got gotcha. you. I don't. I don't think I bought a pair of jeans in about six or seven years. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, do you I'm, ever, not, I'm not a shopper. Do you ever, <laughs> there you go. Do you ever get out to the beach much? Out to Myrtle Beach and back that way? You know, when I was in Myrtle Beach, uh, I lived on the intercoastal waterways. I went out on that a lot. I didn't. I, I'm a guy that I really don't. I don't care for sand too much. I never really wanted to be all sandy and get in my car and drive home. So I, I would say in the <laughs> I went to coastal in 2002. And I left there in 2015, right before I got married, moved back to Columbia, South Carolina. Right. And so I was there for 13, 13 years, and I bet you I went to the beach maybe 15 times in 13 years. Wow. I got I got one. So that'll that'll tell you that'll tell you uh, how much. Um, but I'm but if I was if a buddy of mine was staying at a beach house and I went down to stay with him, yeah. I was fine with going on the beach knowing that i could come off and shower right there at a house that was on the beach i was <laughs> gotcha. okay with that maybe right. i'm maybe that's me being particular about my cars and not want to stand on my cars there you go so i got one question before we get to our next segment okay which will be real quick uh but i have All a right. buddy i grew up with in la who's a huge chiefs fan and i would be remiss if i didn't ask you his question and he said what was it like coming out of the tunnel at arrowhead which is one of, arguably one of the loudest stadiums in the NFL. Arrowhead by far is the loudest stadium I've ever played in. Well, hold on, um, hold on, hold on. Hold he on. said that he no, he said that he ever played in. Did you ever play in Seattle? I played in Seattle, but I'm telling you right now, Seattle was my my only time I played in Seattle was the third preseason game um, in 2007 when I was with Minnesota. So that was the game that the starters actually played a lot. Uh-huh. So it was actually a, a, an environment that the fans were going crazy just because of you know that being the game that the starters do play a good bit. Uh-huh. But that was loud. I do remember that, and I do remember my ears ringing at halftime a little bit at Seattle. Okay. But I remember in Kansas City, 06, they go to the playoffs. They lose in 06. Well, in 07, our first two games were against Houston and Chicago. We had lost those two games 
um, the uh, in 07, and then our first home game was against Minnesota in 07, the third game of the season. And I remember coming out of that tunnel, and I, mean, I just remember that. It was just so crazy because I, you know, coming from Coastal, our biggest game was, I think, ten to 12,000 stu- or you know fans. And so you get there in preseason, it's kind of one of those things, but then the environment of a, of a true game, um, it was just unbelievable in area, man. I mean, I remember being two foot away from, you know, a teammate trying to talk to them and you couldn't even have a conversation. It was so loud. Unreal. That was, there's a reason that when they went back and forth with Seattle that year for the decibel loudest stadium, there's a reason that Arrowhead is. The one considered one allowed us, and I was definitely able to experience that that uh, first year. So I will definitely wow. say that Airhead for me was the loudest stadium I ever played. In. <laughs> okay. So, so Fatty T, you heard it from Tyler Thigpen, Arrowhead loudest stadium he's ever played in. All right, and I'll go on record too. That was the most fun I ever had. That in my the uh, four or five teams that I played for, that was definitely the most fun I ever had was in Kansas City. I love that place. Right. Wow. Hey. Um. Well, listen, we're going to get into our last segment, and then we'll get you on your way. Is that all right? That sounds good. Okay, so uh, we talked about this a little earlier. We said we were going to do this with you. Uh, we have a segment that we do every single week called Asshole or Douchebag. And what we do is we just bring up shit that we experience through the week or something we see out there, and we want to know. Uh, we always ask our guests, of course, um, you think it's an asshole thing that they're doing, or is it a douchebag thing that they're doing? You game? And I was I was racking my brain. as soon as I asked you that earlier I was like I got to rack my brain. <laughs> what is this? Scenario All right. Of a- All right. So here's what we got for you. Okay. So the first one's easy. We've done this one a few times. We want your take on it. Uh, we want to know guys that wear socks with sandals. Asshole or douchebag? Douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Right 1, quick and in a hurry. One thousand percent douchebag. Here we go. We got it. I didn't even have to. I didn't even have to hesitate on that. <laughs> All right, next Sorry one. Sorry if you guys wear that. I no, that. not at all. No, no, let's do it. Uh, all right, so second one. Guys who keep their stickers on their hats. So, like, the brand guys, new stickers. Guys who keep their stickers? Yes. Mm, Douchebag. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, now, if you do one of these things, it's okay, but you have to call yourself out. That's the rules, all right? No, 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 no. no. There's no way I'm keeping a sticker on my hat. What about the tags? Do you know the tags that hang off the hat? Not no, but hell no. I, <laughs> okay. I, I see, no, but hell no. I see, I see Tyler Thigpen with the... Uh, like the curve the country brim. curve, curve brim trucker hat, right? Is that is that your favorite hat? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. I like it. I do have a couple flat bills. My yeah. coastal hats are flat bills. So there you go. Yeah, they don't have any stickers on. There you go. <laughs> All right, this one came up last week. Uh, people that fart on airplanes. People that what? That fart on fart airplanes. Fart on airplanes. Yeah. That's an asshole. That's an a- <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> And then last one we got asshole talking shit behind somebody's back. That's, yeah, <laughs> yes. some assholes talking shit. Well, the backstory is so you calling me an asshole because the backstory was is I had to fart on the airplane and I let a couple rip and I told him he was an asshole. He called for me it. an asshole for it. So, <laughs> oh, well, that, that makes sense. I mean, I'm probably, I probably I'll be honest with you, I'm probably guilty of that. Oh yeah, who isn't? An asshole, so. <laughs> All right, last one we have. Uh, this one will tie back into to football. Yeah. So centers who have stinky buttholes. That's an asshole move. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally an <laughs> asshole. You know the you know you know the asshole move on part of that being a quarterback. What's that? Is when you stick your hand back in their face. <laughs> uh, That's you, when you get them back. You give them the old dirty Sanchez. <laughs> oh, Absolutely, man. give them dirty Sanchez right back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, right on, Tyler. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, what, what, what's next for Tyler? I know you got you got a baby on the way. You're only days away from becoming a yeah, father, uh, right? Monday so. Monday morning. Monday morning, we go in at uh, six a.m. to be induced. So, oh, okay, uh, okay. Wish wish us luck on that. So, we are baby girl. Yeah, our thoughts are with you, baby girl. You got a name yet? Yeah, uh, Cameron Claire Thigpen. I love it. Nice, uh, beautiful name. All right, well, uh, our best to you and your wife and all the future. What about, uh, what are you doing these days? Are you just going to, you know, have the baby enjoy um, life for a bit? Or right now. I help, I help out a little bit around um, uh, the little high school over here in the area with my old college coach. He coaches that now. Okay. So I'll help out from time to time over there doing that. But uh, other than that, I really uh, hadn't done much. Uh, we're just trying to, we bought a lot on the lake here in Columbia nice. uh, about four or five months ago. 
Yeah. So we're just trying to um, finalize the building plans for that to start building. So that's the biggest thing on the agenda besides uh, having a little girl here coming up. So hopefully that'll get started here shortly, and hopefully by next summer I'll be able to enjoy some water. Excellent. Well, hey, our thoughts are with you, and uh, best of luck to a healthy uh, baby girl. And uh, make sure you send us some pictures when she's born, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. That was a lot of fun. Hey, thanks, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it, Tyler. Tyler Thickpin, yes, everybody. All right. Thank you so much. Tyler Thickpin, everybody. Crude Nation, that was a great, great interview. So we, yeah, we, uh, oh, let me, uh, sorry. not your phone. <laughs> it's your phone. That's my phone. All right, Tyler. Thanks. Bye. All right. So he told us re- retired NFL quarterback. Yep. Uh, dude, that was awesome. Yeah. I had a lot of fun talking to him. Yeah, he was good. It was great. Yeah. It was a great interview. We had some questions come through that we got to ask a little bit on the uh, the old Facebook. And, you know, uh, and I'm I'm glad, like, you know, Fatty T I grew up with, and yeah. uh, he's he a his huge Chief fan. So, yeah, we got his question in. I was excited to be able to do that for him. Uh, hey, Josh, he didn't really answer our question. Like, I know you had a story in mind. Yeah, there must have been a story there, there with the Broadway on the beach. And uh, Broadway on the beach. Yeah, there. I, he, Josh had something in mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he did. And yeah. I think Tyler was smart enough to kind of skirt the issue. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that was pretty smart of him. Uh, well, that was a good time. But that no, was that was time. a good time. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna get into a little sports talk, and we'll finish off the show. Let's talk uh, NFL a little bit. We've been talking NFL for the past forty-five. Um, how about that Thursday game, man? What'd you think? I thought the rematch of the Super Bowl was way better this time around. Yeah. Um, my, my sister-in-law who you've met yes. was at the game with her husband, big Broncos fan, big Broncos fan. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, I was telling my wife, she, she was, she was tired. She went to bed early. And so she, yeah. when, when she woke up the next day, I was telling her like what happened and like, it's nice when you pay to fly out to a game for your team Yeah, and it ends up being a fantastic game. Yeah, of course. Like it's way better than you wasting your time and money going out there and it's a blowout and you're like, uh, <laughs> eh. yeah. It was a good game, man, right down to the end. Um, and Josh, who I know is listening as well, is a huge uh, Panthers fan. And, uh, you know, we're in our fantasy league together. Right, he's and dabbing, he's, right? Yeah, he's dabbing, and that's his team name. And he puts out, uh, and Gano for the win, and I'm like, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> and then he missed it. So. And he shanked it. Oh, he Lace shanked it. So uh, Denver Broncos go on to win the first game of the season in the Super Bowl rematch. Cam Newton got hit. Eight times, man. The Broncos' D looks good. Their D, does, well, they paid enough for it. It better look good. Yeah, it should look good. Uh, so. I think their their offense is where they're a little bit weaker right now. Right. So their defense does have to step up. Right. So I think that they're on a good track. Yeah. Um, Simi, I think there was some plays where he looked good that it wasn't his fault that there was picks. Right. Um, but... You know, fuck it. It is what it is. Hey, don't forget you're on my phone. Who are you texting on my phone? Oh yeah, I'm texting. I'm texting China actually. Oh, yeah. Chicken of the China, the Chinese chicken. Yes, exactly. Uh, how about uh, tomorrow is nine uh, eleven? Um, so in remembrance of nine eleven, we're kind of curious what your thoughts are on these teams that are talking about having some demonstrations. Who's going to kneel? Well, there was a lot. Some of these teams were talking about having like paying paying their specs to it. Right, but what my question to you was: Do any of these guys kneel tomorrow during nine eleven? And that, to me, I think that's kind of that. I understand that. I understand your fight. Yeah, I understand what you're standing up for, but I don't think that that's the day to do it. Not at all. I don't think so. I'm with you. So, to me, I think tomorrow, if they do it, it's disrespectful. I know they're talking about the Seahawks have something planned. We're gonna see what happens there. So, who knows? Um. However, on a good note, Avery Williamson of the Tennessee Titans um, is talking about wearing uh, some red, white, and blue cleats that will signi- uh, pay tribute to the uh, 9-11 uh, attack. Which now, I think is awesome. Which I think is great. However, the NFL has decided uh, that if he does wear them, they're going to actually fine him um, for violating the league's... Um, the league's uniform policy. Right. Or rules or whatever. Which, can I say, I know this is crude sports talk, but fuck the shield on this issue. Dude, fuck the shield. That's okay. so douchebaggish. Like, give them a break. It's cleats. And honestly, and I understand cleats yeah, have now become cleats. part of the uniform. They're fucking cleats. Um, my thoughts, uh, well, well, here, part of that good news story is that two police unions uh, that were part of 9-11 have actually vowed that if he does do it and he gets fined, they're going to pay his fine. That's awesome. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think that that's good for them. I mean, it helps with their PR as yep. well as, as as them just being good human beings. Exactly. 
Exactly. Uh, fuck you. So do what you feel. We will cover your expense. Yeah, exactly. I think that's awesome. Now, one of the, my this is my shame story of the week. Okay, Miracle Mattress. Oh fuck. In San Antonio, um, has shut down, and I'm fucking glad they've shut down because they put out an ad. Yeah. Um, that was replaying. They towered up a bunch of mattresses, and they let the mattresses fall over, trying to replay the 9/11 attack in a, in an, in a fucking ad. And I was just like, "Are you like who they 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 produced the ad? They thought about it. Who thinks that's a good idea?" I think this is one of those where it's a um, it's a shitty business trying to get rich off of something horrible that happened. Agreed. Like, I mean, that happens. It's they're not the first ones. They're not the last. But that's one of those things where fuck them, boycott them. That's stupid. They're trying to profit off the lives being lost in a tragic incident. What's next? We're gonna have the Oklahoma bombing sale. And then we're going to have the, uh, what, the Benghazi attack sale? Yeah. That's fucking gay. I, I am like, I'm really pissed off at a company that would do that. So they've shut their doors, uh, and I'm glad. I so. mean, really, I could have been there. I could have been a way better marketing manager for that company than whoever that fuckhead was right. that was. Right. That was stupid. That was Anyways. stupid. Moving uh, on. Moving along. Last, moving on. Last NFL story, Giselle Bunchen. Uh, is working out Tom Brady at home because under his four game suspension, the rules say he can't throw catch with any of his players. Well, let's hold on. But like, I need you to to you just said Giselle is working out Tom Brady. She's working I have out Tom whole, Brady. I have a whole different thing in my <laughs> on mind on Instagram. So, so yeah, there's pictures. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now tell the story <laughs> then, because now I'm thinking there's dick pics of no, her working out she's Tom working Brady. Him out as in he she's they're in their like, backyard. She's and he's working him he's out. Tossing, he's tossing the pig at her. The pigskin. Pig. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> that sounds. This whole story sounds like a euphemism. This whole story is over, actually. This whole story is over. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go into Major League Baseball. There's not much going on, really. Uh, right? well, Things are heating up a little bit. Last few weeks of the season. Um, depends. I, the Blue Jays, if they lose one more game, I hear they're they're out of the mix. There's a. Where did all my shit go? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's what's going on. Do you yeah. have a Do you have a major league baseball story? You know, or? no. I mean, I had all my standings up. There's mm. a uh, like the divisionals. It, it's most of them are not even close. I think there's yeah. one uh, is like two and a half games back. Other than that, it's like nine games, fourteen games. Well, that's terrible. That is fucking terrible. Move on to some hockey. Move on to hockey. Hockey. Let's go hockey. So the World Cup is starting up this week. It's got exhibition games going on. And what uh, happened? Canada lost. To who? America. America. So the U.S. beat Canada 4-2 to two in World Cup exhibition hockey. It was just a fucking exhibition game. All right, yeah, way. listen here, Merkins. So, it um, was just an exhibition. Not to mention, second period, U.S. goon Ryan Kessler got ejected for boarding okay. Shea Weber. He you che- only called him a goon because he he's part of the U.S. He cheated. <laughs> he cheat. That's cheating. You That's can't board. cheating. You can't board in hockey, eh? <laughs> Read on. I know, eh? hoser, right on. What a hoser, eh? <laughs> he went boarding the guy in the boards and he got kicked out of the game, eh? Eh? Anyways, I'm sorry. It's bad. I'm like bad Canadian. That's all right. Uh, exhibition p- can play will continue until September 17th when the preliminary round of the round robin will start. They uh, still doing the North Pole goal <laughs> lighting up for Canada? Yeah. So we talked about that. Was it the first episode? Dude, our first episode 29 weeks ago. Yeah. We talked about that. 29? That's like six months Can you fucking believe that? Like next week is episode 30? Whoa, episode Can't 30. believe it. So 29, that took us 29 episodes to get an NFL quarterback on. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we had an NFL um, cornerback. Yeah. We that, had a cornerback. Yeah, that rhymes. It's close enough if you yeah. said it fast. And we only we had him only like a couple episodes in, so that was fun. Um, okay, let's move on. So college, listen, um, we are get, we're nearing the end. So, and I know you love college, and I know a lot of our all right. Let's college. just that's fine. We can skip it. Uh, I think next week we're going to bring in a college analyst yeah. to help us with this. Yeah, and I, you and him can go to town and talk college. Yeah, because I was already talking with him today about some of this shit. Yeah, like there's some shit going on. So why don't you highlight what's and happening right now? We've been doing this show, football. and it looks like there will be no upset. No with upsets Clemson. happening. Okay, it doesn't look like it. No, we kept Tyler on long enough that we found out there's no. Yeah, no but upsets. some some games to check out tonight for me. Uh, I would say check out the Arkansas TCU game, uh-huh. the Cal versus uh, San Diego State, right. and Virginia Tech and Tennessee. Is the Lamar U of H game back up and running? Uh, it was under I, rain delay. Do you last know time it was, yeah, lightning delay or something. Is it still, uh, you think? 
Would you like? Oh, you don't have check? to change it. No, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Um, we'll find out with the on the audio version. Uh, you guys will know already. So that's right. Uh, UFC runs tonight. Yeah, go check it out. Stipe Miocic uh, versus Alistair Overeem and some other people on that card. Uh, CM, CM Punk. Punk. Yeah, CM Punk against Mickey Gall. I think Mickey Gall's going to smash him. You think so? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the other one I wouldn't be mi- I wouldn't mind seeing is uh, Uriah Faber. Okay. Uh, versus Jimmy Rivera. Okay. I think uh, Faber Faber may be on his last leg. Yeah. We'll see what happens. What's okay? Well, we're we're near the end. So, uh, what what's the CB Dalloway so elevator CB, incident? So CB Dalloway was on the card. Okay. And uh, these guys were at I can't even remember the the hotel in Cleveland. Yeah. But it was him and uh, a bunch of the I think Stepe and um, Travis Brown and Uriah Faber were all on the same elevator. Yeah. And there was a malfunction with the elevator. And, uh-huh. and he ended up hurting his back because of it. In the elevator? Yeah, I, I don't know if it like dropped and stopped or what. No but, shit. But there was a malfunction with it, so he's wow. he, ba- he had to bow out of the fight. All right. So that was uh, that was kind of interesting. Do you think he made that shit up? No. You think it's real? I think it's real. Wow. I oh. mean, if he's on he's on a three fight loss streak. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I think he needed to get back in and and mm, get a win. He wanted to get back in, yeah. but, but who the, kn- who knows? So the elevator fucked him up. The elevator fucked him up. All right, guys. Well, uh, if you got nothing else, I think we're good to wrap this show up today. Everybody, uh, check us out. Subscribe, review, share. Join Crude Nation on our website, www.crudesportstalk.com. Go check it out. And then when we get other uh, guests and cool things going on, we'll let you know. You'll be the first to know. And we got shit to do, so we are Crude Sports Talk, and we are out. Later, guys. Hoo-wee. Oh, there's no music. That's weird. There will be. Like, usually On the audio the version, there'll be music. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Facebook Live, go fuck yourself, is what we're a, saying. I still need a new iPad. Yeah. So if Apple's out there listening and wants to sponsor the show, Jeremy needs a new iPad. Yes, I need a new iPad. I need a All right, man. Are you going to hit the end on the video? Yeah, All right, bye, Facebook Live. See you, everybody. Later, Hoser. <laughs>